What is up, everybody? It's been a long time since I was in college, but once upon a time I was, and I read a book called The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, which talks about a thing that I believe in German was referred to as the Ungerkiefer, which means like terrible, awful thing. But it's also a wonderful tool that's being used on Kubernetes, working with data in lots of different ways, and it's called Kafka. That being said, we needed a storyteller, and we found one in Abby. Abby, welcome to the Data on Kubernetes community. Hey, Bart. Nice to, nice to be here. So I'm going to take you guys through a little bit of story time today. Um, and for context, I'm a PM at Cockroach Labs, and my team works on data streaming. So I end up working with Kafka quite, quite a bit. Um, and I'm repurposing a, a lunch and learn I did a few, few years ago, but I'm going to take, take it a bit more narrative focused through, through Kafka's journey. Um, so cuddle up and we'll get started. So our tale begins in 1883 in Prague, where Franz Kafka is, of course, born. Um, he became known for his stories of bizarre and surrealist predicaments, very nightmarish, very bureaucratic worlds. And his most famous work, Metamorphosis, as Bart mentioned earlier, um, told the story, if you're watch looking visually, you can see, uh, of a middle-aged salesman that inexplicably turned into a cockroach, a story we obviously love here at Cockroach Labs, as we love all things featuring cockroaches. And uh, I'm, I'm kidding a little bit about the subject of this talk, um, because, of course, Franz Kafka is, is, is not the subject of the talk, but um, the Kafka we're talking about is the distributed streaming platform. So let's wind the way back machine, not all the way to 1883, but to 2010. So um, in 2010, a company I'm sure you know called LinkedIn was growing very quickly. They were doubling users every year. I think they hit about 70 million users in 2010. Um, and they're adding a ton of new features. I went on the Wayback Machine to find this um, kind of uh, picture of what Kafka, or sorry, of LinkedIn looked like um, back then. And, uh, you know, for those just listening, uh, there's already a ton of, you know, Pretty complex features, I think, for for the time. There's a ton of trending links. We've got a ton of different ways you can kind of like see different posts for, you know, either like your industry or posts for your region or posts from people that you're connected to or that they're connected to or that they're connected to. So you can go out like many different hops on your connection pool to, to kind of um, see what people are talking about in your industry. Um, and you know, obviously with a hugely, hugely growing user base uh, and like a, a large growing number of features, it, it becomes very hard to add, add new things. Um, uh, and so, you know, they, they wanted to not just add all of these kind of like user facing features, but also do kind of machine learning in the background and more user tracking and everything they wanted to do required a lot of pushing data into many places for processing, for storing and serving. And unfortunately, their data infrastructure was just not scaling well with them. Um, so, you know, again, if you're looking visually, we I, there's a kind of graph of what it generally looks like. but um, the kind of point here is that each of their different data stores and services and, and, and each kind of place that data can either be like a destination or, or, or a source for um, when you're pushing data between places, uh, they kind of needed to build out a custom connector for each of those, you know, different connections they needed to make. So if you can think about adding a new service or a new data store over time, those kind of number of connections that you need to build, those number of custom connections ends up growing at an N squared rate, which uh, it's okay at first, but as you as you grow and as you scale up, that becomes really just untenable. Um, and, and unfortunately, they kind of ran into this and their data infrastructure just was like not scaling well with them. Um, and in LinkedIn's own blog post on the subject, they kind of describe this and their data infrastructure and, and ability to work with it as becoming... Uh, I'll quote, so nightmarish and scary uh, that they end up kind of when they're looking for a solution, naming their solution after Franz Kafka, who was very famous for his nightmarish and scary works of fiction, uh, but but who also was, you know, a very prolific writer and their, end up, their solution that they end up uh, working with 
is, you know, all focused around writing. So uh, that's kind of another inspiration for the name. Um, but, uh, you know, so they, they have a lot of this complexity that is, you know, growing as they're growing. And in 2009, 2010, they kind of really set out to fix this. Um, so enter these kind of three characters, Jay, Neha, and June. They kind of end up working on this amongst, you know, many other people, I'm sure. Uh, and their, their team comes up with this general architecture um, that looks a, a bit more simplified from what we saw earlier. So instead of needing to create a and manage a connection to and from, you know, every data store and every service, um, you know, you only need to, they, they have this unified gatekeeper that's just sitting right in the middle of all those connections. And you only need to manage connections in, in this new architecture to and from that gatekeeper. So for each um, data store, you only need, you know, max two connections, one in and one out, um, instead of needing n squared with the number of like services and, uh, uh, you know, other data stores you need to talk to. Um, and so this is kind of the general architecture that ends up becoming Kafka. Um, there are a lot of other considerations with the design that we're not going to get into, um, but they designed it to kind of be, amongst other things, you know, very high throughput, fault tolerant, scalable, and um, have like elastic isolation. And so, you know, very quick after the development, um, I'm sure if you've heard of Kafka, you kind of know that it was then um, open sourced. So in 2011, uh, Kafka was accepted into the Apache Incubator Project. Um, Apache, the Apache Software Foundation, of course, is a group formed in 1999, uh, home for open source projects, all living together kind of under the same legal and governance framework with a common distribution licenses and, and kind of development processes that they all kind of follow. And the Apache Incubator is kind of this process that takes about a year and a half to go through and establishes all these kind of processes for governance and development um, going forward for, for the new project. Uh, and so they kind of go through this and become an open source project. And this really enables Kafka to be adopted more, more widely and more broadly um, outside of LinkedIn. And so, you know, uh, the, the chapter three here is that it really becomes the dominant um, player in, in kind of this, uh, you know, streaming platform space by 2010, or sorry, by 2020. Um, so about, you know, 10 years after it was, you know, originally kind of incubated inside of LinkedIn, there are, you know, 80 of the Fortune 100 companies are using Kafka internally. Um, there's a nice race card slide. If you're, if you're listening, there's a lot of companies uh, on here, you know, all, most of the, you know, flashy tech companies, you know, Shopify, Uber, Spotify, but also, um, you know, a lot of more traditional companies, Goldman Sachs, the New York Times, you know, companies that have a, you know, big data infrastructure needs, which really, you know, in the modern day is every big company, you know, uh, most of them end up using Kafka in, in their architecture, um, which ends up, you know, kind of kind of making it an industry standard in a lot of ways. And, and that's kind of where we are today. I would say like now kind of where we're going into in the future is there are many kind of companies and paid products that are are, are built around um, Kafka outside of just this Apache open source version. You know, there's Confluent, Instacluster has a managed Kafka, there's AWS managed Kafka. Um, and there's also kind of a lot of spins on Kafka and other PubSub messaging platforms. Kafka certainly wasn't the first um, PubSub messaging platform uh, to, to come out, but, um, you know, there's certainly more ones coming out. I kind, of, kind of looking forward, I think, and why this is like an interesting subject is like data needs are kind of growing at a faster rate than ever before. Um, you know, the amount of data being created and needing to be stored and needing to be passed around is is growing at an even faster rate than just like internet usage, um, right? And it, it's it's accelerating. Um, that growth is accelerating as well. So like, I you know, I think I heard a stat where in the last couple of years, the amount of just data, digital data that has been created is more than the last 10 years, which is more than the last 100 years. And kind of that's, yeah, that trend is is. is uh, going to continue, and so when you when you think about it to stay competitive, like internet scale companies are having to add many more features at you know an accelerated rate, and 
these this, these data needs of just passing data between systems are, are becoming even more important. Um, and so w- when we look forward, and why I think it's interesting to look back on Kafka, um, is that, you know, th- this is really the, these kind of this key data infrastructure is what's going to enable, you know, the next generation of companies and the next generation of growth in the, in, in the biggest companies in the world. Um, and, and Kafka has like really been a cornerstone of that, as we've seen, like, you know, over the last decade, the growth in kind of the digital world. Um, and that's kind of where, where, where we are today. I don't know, Bart, if, if you have any any questions or comments about Kafka, I know I'm sure you've had to deal with it in, in your life. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is good. Well, first of all, this is a fantastic overview because we talk about these things a lot without really knowing exactly where they've come from. And we've also seen the arrival of, of different players that are that are sort of in, in the space. And, you know, in our research report uh, from 2022, the presence of new workloads making their way onto Kubernetes, such as streaming and messaging, such as AI and ML, and also analytics, Kafka, you know, very much figures into that conversation. And then we see the, the landscape growing with other technologies that are out there that could be like, you know, Apache Pulsar or, or other ones that are in the space too, like Red Panda. And, it, but Kafka still being, you know, a very dominant, a dominant force. Do you imagine that that ecosystem is going to continue to grow? That Kafka is under pressure. That we might see a new term from, um, you know, appearing or or new players on the scene. I'm definitely really excited about, you know, I think all of the things you mentioned, Red Panda, Pulsar, let's see kind of where they go and where the space evolves into. I would say, you know even without the need to surplant Kafka, just the growing data needs mean that there's a place for a ton of different players and a ton of ton of different use cases, even if Kafka still kind of remains the like industry standard for, for a lot of these like big at scale use cases. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely excited, but I don't have a, a strong opinion on whether whether Kafka is on the decline or not. I certainly don't. I certainly think Kafka usage is still growing a, a lot today. That's a great point, like you said as well, too. Given the the vast amount of data that's that's being produced and and is only growing exponentially, it's uh, it's safe to say, I think it's safe to say that you know a lot of these things are are, are still very well positioned and actually gaining traction um, on top of that. And we've seen that as well too with conversations that we've had about the Strimzy projects. Um, once again, other things that are that are being uh, built to enhance uh, Kafka's reach. In your particular case, when was the first time that you came across it? Yeah, I definitely heard and was familiar with Kafka um, for a while just from, you know, being, I, I kind of started out as in software engineering, but I hadn't really like used it and and come across, a, you know, gotten really familiar with the, you know, industry use cases until I joined, joined Cockroach in 2020 um, and started working in, you know, the the streaming space. And they're, of course, you know, one of the biggest the, the biggest place that we we end up streaming um, data to from Cockroach and, uh, you know, along with many others, including, you know, Google PubSub and um, cloud storage systems and, and, and um, things like that. But, but Kafka is still kind of the, the place that, you know, most most people are going to right now. Yep. Fantastic. Good. Um, anything else we should be keeping in mind? Tips, tricks, things that folks should know if they're going to be starting out with Kafka? Yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of great um, talks that Confluent does. They have a you know, they've put a port a lot into education around Kafka in general. They're of course the the um, you know three people I mentioned at LinkedIn who uh, who had been working on it. It started started Confluent as as a um, company on top of um, Kafka after leaving LinkedIn, and and uh, they they do a ton of great. Uh, educational materials. So I, I would definitely check them out um, if, if you're just trying to get into it. Good. But definitely worth keeping in mind. Um, anything else that you're working on that we should know about? Yeah, we're doing some really cool stuff. Something I'm really excited about that we're just kind of taking out of preview beta status is doing um, distri- we're, we're kind of doing upstream um, 
transformations and and stream processing, uh, lightweight stream processing, I would say, um, out of Cockroach before we even stream it into a place like Kafka or Cloud Storage or whatever. Um, so kind of adding some filtering and transformation abilities. And, and, and that's that's super fun and interesting. I'm really excited to see kind of what people end up building with that um, just right out of Cockroach. Fantastic. Well, very good, Abby. Um, if you've got anything else you'd like to share, now is the time. And if not, looking forward to future conversations about streaming. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, Bart. This, is, this has been really fun. Um, it, it was great to meet you. Likewise. We'll catch you soon. Take care. Oh, thanks.